Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight's night 11 and my commitment to record one coding bat video a night as long as schools are closed. So whether you're a student of mine or someone out there just learning to program, please feel free to send along any questions or comments. We're going to look at tonight the front back problem, which is located in warm-up 1, and this video is looking at the Python solution. The question states, given a string, return a new string where the first and last char chars, or characters, have been exchanged. On the surface, it sounds pretty straightforward. I think one of the things to really kind of highlight right away is that there's been no indication about a restriction on length. So we have to be really careful here um, and ask ourselves what happens if the length of the string is zero or what. In the first place, I'm going to look for some hints on that is down at the examples. The first example, we have front back code, and you'll notice that the C and the E have been swapped. So um, front back code gives E O D E. And our second example, which is nice because it's that example of a string of length 1, we notice that the string has been returned unchanged. And another way to think about it is um, the first and last letter would swap, but since the first and last letter are the same thing, it just is unchanged. And the third example, front back AB, gives me front back BA. Now, before jumping in, I just want to make a general comment that this question is tricky, so make sure you understand what's happening. You might look at this and say it's not particularly tricky, and that's great. Um, but I want you to think about what happens when the problems do get harder. And I strongly suggest you map out a few, a few examples, let's put examples here, to understand indexing and the general case. If we take that first example, code, um, and take the original past value, and then write out what's returned and swap the indexes, we can then write out how this would be constructed using string construction. So we would take str index 3 plus str at index 1, 2, 3. Remember, inclusive, exclusive. And if we take the second parameter minus the first, we get the length, which is 2. And that confirms. And then str 0. Then we take the second example, ab, which has an index of 0, 1. And that's going to return ba. And we see we swap those. And again, I can write out the string construction here, str at 1, which is the last value, plus str at 1 to 1. This is a little bit of a unique case, because notice, if we take 1 minus 1, we get 0. And this is actually producing an empty string. And then str at 0. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and generalize this. So if I was to generalize this, well... I can see right away the very last one is always the last, the first index, so that's going to be str at 0. Now let's, so I'm just going to, that's the last one. I have to do these spaces in a second. And now I look at the first position. Well, the first position is different in the two cases, but we can relate them back to the length. And I see that 3 is the length of code minus 1. And we can confirm if that's true in this case, so the length of a, b is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So that means this one is going to be str at the ln of str minus 1. Now I have to deal with that middle part. Well, I can see both in both cases it's 1, so we're going to say str at 1. But then it's that next value that we need to kind of figure out. So again, I'm going to use the length of the, the string to kind of see if I can generalize it, and it's actually the same thing as this first case. It's going to be the length of str minus 1. And that's it. So like I said in my last video for last night, um, string construction is a really useful technique, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to say new str is equal to, and we're going to say str at length of str minus 1, plus str from 1 to len of str minus 1, that's the middle part, plus str at 0. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to return str. Now, oh, not str, new str. Now you might look at this and say this isn't fully correct. And let's see what happens. We run and we get an index out of range. Now the reason this is happening is because, remember at the start, when we read this problem, it didn't give you a restriction in the length of the string. And 
Also, if you watched last night's video, you'll remember that I said with Python, you have to be really careful if you're accessing individual indexes that do not exist. So if we have a string that is length zero or length or length one, it means that you're going to get an index out of bounds issue. And how we can solve that, and actually my correction, length one would be fine. No, it wouldn't index out of bounds right there. How we can solve that is we can do a quick little if statement at the start here to account for that. Because really, um, if you think about it, if the length is smaller than two, the string just doesn't change. And we can see that if we have a length of one, we just return the string. And if we have a length of zero, return the string. So I just put a simple if statement here, and I say if length of str is greater than two, sorry, is less than two, what am I going to do? I'm just going to return the str and be done with it. And I hit go, and there it is. So I hope this video helped, and as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Have a good evening.